Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, September 14th, around 10 a.m. Mountain Time 2022. Another large earthquake rumbling overnight in the Loyalty Islands. No tsunami threat, thankfully. And we have snow in the forecast. But the big story, rescuers search for a person missing in the Los Angeles mountain area mudslides as thousands evacuate. Keep calm. It's boom time. Southern California mudslides damage homes and carry away cars. Rescuers search for a person missing in a mudslide Tuesday as big yellow tractors plowed through dark, thick sludge and pushed boulders off roads after flash floods swept dirt, rocks, and trees down fire-scarred slopes, washed away cars, and buried buildings in small mountain communities in Southern California. We do have video footage of some of it, and it is quite frightening. Here we see someone filming the mudslide as it overtakes a parking lot. And another guy screaming, get out of here. Watch the power of this mud just push everything down in its wake. This is more like cement rather than water. So if you get caught in this, it's game over. You can hear it in the background. There it is. Wow. And this is typical of burn scar areas. The mud is dark and ash laden and as thick as cement. So two massive mudslides occurred moments apart, completely overtaking a road in Oak Glen in that footage. All links will be below. Tonight in Southern California, widespread damage and destruction after torrential rain unleashed mudslides. Watch as this man runs from a wall of water, rocks, and dead trees in Oak Glen. Hey, we just saw that. It's just wave after wave after wave of mud debris coming down from this flash flood. Multiple homes and businesses in the area destroyed. You got homes and backyards destroyed all the way down this creek. Hundreds forced to evacuate or shelter in place. This mud is some 10 feet high, and it's not just mud. Look, it's debris like that and also boulders, and you can see how high it is up here on this side. The rain forcing water rescues. These two waiting for help on the roof of their SUV in Paris. And tonight, new body camera video from the San Bernardino Police Department showing what officers faced as they rescued a family from raging rapids Sunday night. And David, this drought ravaged West just unable to absorb so there you have it. It's pretty devastating what's happening in California. Here's some more footage of that. Uh, look at that. Just absolute destruction all over the place. Mud flood much? And this is just a sign of the times that we are entering into. As record low temperatures were set across the U.S., nary a peep from the mainstream. The National Weather Service at Boise, Idaho, reported a new record low temperature at Twin Falls on Monday, September 12th, with a low of 40. That broke the old previous benchmark of 42 set back in 2010, which is right along the solar cycle. Imagine that. Now, Sunday afternoon also saw a new cold record set at Laramie Airport in Wyoming. The daily high on September 11th struggled to reach just 25 Fahrenheit, busting the old record of 27 set back in 74. And the National Weather Service at Dodge City, Kansas, registered 41 Fahrenheit at Garden City Regional Airport on September 11th a reading that usurped the previous record of 44 degrees back in 1989. More records. On Sunday morning, a record low of 43 was set in Russell, Kansas, busting the 45 degrees set back in 2007. And you might notice that all of these record lows have been in the last decade or so. Hmm, interesting. And finally, though by no means... Uh, to cap off an exhaustive list, according to Cap Allon, Livingston, Montana recently tied a cold record temperature of 27 degrees. So very cold, and the sheep, well, they continue to go bad. Lake Mead uh, rose rapidly over the last month or so and leveled off, but it is rising again, and that's good news. And there's more rain falling right now in that Lake Mead area. That is the total precipitated moisture just through the next 24 hours. So those are going to be the wet areas in question. The coast of Texas and the Rocky Mountains and the Northern Plains. And here we see that snow coming up on the GFS model. We have some snow coming tonight right there in Colorado to the Southern Mountains as well as up in Wyoming there. And then a second system here Wednesday and Thursday. 
on the 23rd of next week should bring some snow to the higher elevations. Flooding and air quality concerns continue in the west. Heavy rain and thunderstorms will continue to produce flooding across the Intermontane West and Four Corners region over the next few days. Meanwhile, air, air quality advisories persist across the northwest into the north central Rockies due to smoke from western wildfires. And let's check out the smoke map real quick. And here we can see the smoke is being blown up into Canada and off to the east. So clear skies out here in the southwest. Heavy smoke still west of Seattle and up in the upper, uh, the northern plains here, mostly. But smoke coming all the way in haze through Dallas and Houston. So if you see it hazy in Texas today, you know it's coming from big fires up in the northwest. Again, all these links will be below the video. Tropical update, disturbance number one now has a 70% chance of cyclone formation, and it's headed right towards the Leeward Islands there. It will hook up and maybe bring some tropical storms here to, well, let's just take a look. Um, at the spaghetti models, shall we? Let me move over here. And let's click on the spaghetti models. So we're going to look at Invest 96L in the Atlantic, and we'll display the current tracks. You can see over 50% of them are coming to smash right into Puerto Rico. And so we're going to keep a close eye on that. So some of them are having a track up towards Bermuda there. So this is definitely going to affect humans on land, and we're going to keep a close eye on it as it develops. Now, Australians are bracing for more pain from rain. It's insane. And this summer will be the triple dip La Nina, as it's been confirmed. We have a great video up on Magnetic Reversal News on the topic, so go check. Oh, actually, it's on this channel, so go check that out. The triple dip La Nina is coming, and you know what's happened the last two years in Australia. Record flooding, thousand-year floods. So we should expect more epic flooding in Australia as they enter summer. Now, according to CNN, much of Australia will face unusually heavy rains in coming months, the country's weather forecasters said on Tuesday. So the bomb is waking up too, and they're actually telling the truth. That's good news. Meanwhile, it's minus 105 degrees somewhere on Earth all the time. And this is Concordia, Antarctica. Yes. It is the middle of winter too, but it is still record cold on Earth as two earthquakes within seconds violently rattle California's wine country. Damage reported after the two quakes of magnitude 4.4 and 3.9, jolting the San Francisco Bay Area. We see a little flurry of activity on the West Coast here, as well as an uptick in activity here in Hawaii, a 3.2 magnitude just kicking off, and that 7 magnitude southeast of the Loyalty Islands, no tsunami threat. That is the seismic update. Well, the Tiernus Fracture Zone continues to rumble, albeit at lower levels. Only one green star. This is magnitude greater than three, and it seems like the activity is kind of slowing down here, but yet the sixth day of the seismic crisis at the Tiernus Fracture Zone. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Nothing special of note except for Taupo Volcano in New Zealand. The number of earthquakes has increased. There was an M4.2 felt locally, and they have now experienced over 600 earthquakes. Let's read the report here. The elevated seismic activity continues. Earthquakes have been more frequent near Lake Taupo throughout the past week and have increased numbers to 40 and 50 quakes on average from the original 30 events per week. 650 quakes have been registered in less than 30 kilometers depth so far in the morning of the 10th of September and the strongest earthquakes with magnitude 4.2. So there are multiple areas of clustering here, but this is not abnormal activity. We've had a similar event in 2019 that we reported on the channel and an event back in 2009 and 2008. What I find strange is that they haven't raised the alert level at all. It's still at zero. And in my opinion, when we have increasing events like this with an uptick, we should at least raise that to alert level one. So there is some unrest at Taupo, but according to the powers that be, there's nothing to worry about. Space weather news update. Some activity is kicking up on the sun. We had an M flare just a few hours ago from the departing region, and but we're most concerned about this coronal hole stream reaching us in just about 24 to 48 hours, and then this activity here. Look at these plasma ropes, a very highly active region. This is the old active region, 3089. And we're going to keep close eye on that as not a lot of flaring is coming out of here, but the magnetic complexity is high. So let's come and check out the sunspot 
summary here, and here we are. It's at Beta Gamma. AR3098 is at Beta Gamma. Is that the one we're talking about? <laughs> I don't think they have it numbered up here. Let's see what this is. Let's see, look at the latest. HMI intensity, if we can get this up here, and this is going to show us that spot in question. This is the departing spot where that M flare came from. Here is the new spot moving in. Yes. So we're going to keep cl close eye on that as it is beta gamma. Here we're looking at the Discover Solar Wind. Nothing much happening. BZ just shifted as well as the phi angle. And that's leading to the density increasing, but the speed has not followed yet. This is indicative of a small coronal, ma a sm small CME hitting us here. So this little jump might have been a CME. And there was one coming at us, a tiny one, albeit. So no effect on the KP index, but the GOES electron flux is now above the alert threshold now for days. And we have a proton event as it has been ever increasing since that strange explosion off the backside of the sun last week. So we'll keep a close eye on that for you. As we turn our attention over to NASA's tiny capstone probe, which suffered problems on its journey to the moon. In fact, it shut itself down. They're still wondering what's going on with that. Something happened up there. And in my opinion, it probably got hit by a little space weather and it has gone into quiet mode. So we can't even send a small CubeSat to, to the moon, yet we wanna bring people there. As increased radiation events are discovered at commercial aviation altitudes. This is bad news for people flying in planes as well, not just packages. According to this abstract, uh, just released, they are showing 57 enhanced radiation level events taken from new measurements on commercial altitude aircraft that's greater than 9 kilometers that are analogous to planes flying through radiation clouds. So if you're in a plane that's flying at high altitude, be aware of the space weather at the time. Not only that, these radiation clouds can occur when there is no sp space weather, which is interesting. And the plane is likely to be flying through a Bremsstrahlung origin gamma ray beam. Evidence point to the beam being produced at high altitudes by incident relativistic electrons coming from the Van Allen belts. And that's not the only place that strange uh, radiation is coming from. And here we have an article, where do these high energy particles that endanger satellites, astronauts, and airplanes come from? Well, I wouldn't suggest you read this or the paper associated with it because they simply used modeling. And that's not going to tell us where it comes from. The last paper from Los Alamos told us it's coming from the Van Allen belts. And according to this article in Newsweek, there are also cracks appearing in Earth's magnetic field as the equinox approaches. Now, scientists have known about these so-called cracks in Earth's magnetic field for quite some time. And they have led to spectacular auroral light shows being seen in the skies despite not having been any solar storms to generate them. Now, according to spaceweather.com, this is called the Russell McFerron effect, which cracks in the magnetic field let more solar wind pass through during the equinoxes. This is during the spring and fall equinox, where both day and night are the same length, and we're entering that time now. So the Mus Russell McPherson effect is more of a geometrical effect to do with the orientation of the solar wind's magnetic field and that of the Earth. So that's interesting. There is always a cusp or open region in the Earth's magnetic field around the north and south poles. So the cracks are permanent, but the solar wind is made up of plasma that has been ejected from the sun during coronal mass ejections or coronal holes. It's always coming at us. It's always present, the solar wind. It's constantly loading additional energy into the magnetosphere, according to Began, and the magnetosphere is compressed on the day side and extends out over 370,000 miles on the night side. And energy from the solar wind is transferred and builds up over a few hours, then is dissipated by the magnetosphere by shedding it through these electric currents. So interesting things uh, to learn about, the M russell mcferron effect, which happens during the equinoxes. And this is the best time to travel to Iceland to witness the aurora because of that effect. Now we have a paper coming out destabilization of the subpolar North Atlantic prior to the Little Ice Age. We'll be covering this at great length at Magnetic Reversal News, and they're talking there about the tipping point. Hello. Some more interesting science news. A dinosaur mummy was found. Not really. And this is going to lead a lot of people to think that they found dinosaur skin, which they did not find. They found preserved dinosaur skin, which is fossilized. 
And researchers believe they found one of the best preserved dinosaurs ever. There it is, the tail of the creature and a front forelimb stuck into the sand there. Pretty fantastic. A member of a field team led by Pickles, a paleontologist, Caleb Brown of Canada's Royal Tyrell Museum, and scientists at the University of New England in Australia spotted the fossil poking out of a cliffside while on a scouting trip for International Field School last year at the Dinosaur Provincial Park in Alberta. It's hard to imagine this animal died 76 million years ago. It's been perfectly preserved since then and just happened to be starting to erode out of this cliff when they were walking by. There you can see the pattern, a close-up of details of the ankle bone and the scales on the skin. Pretty amazing. Pickles estimates the dinosaur to be 13 foot long, around the length of a car. And here we can see that juvenile dinosaur. It's a hadrosaurian dinosaur. And these are the areas where they think they have fossilized preserved skin. Probably not skin with DNA, but an actual imprint of the skin because the skin was fossilized. So that's a big boom for paleontologists worldwide. More paleontological breakthroughs as new DNA evidence rewrites ancient American history. I'm sure many of you know about Assateague and Chickateague and the wild horses there on the east coast of the United States. Well, many people have speculated where those horses came from and new DNA evidence proves that they came from the Spanish around the 16th century. Lost um, some horses and they became wild in that region. So pretty fascinating science coming out and that is a boom to knowledge proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance hope you got something out of the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't share this with like-minded people be safe we love you oh become a patreon support the work we do we love you too